Hey guys, welcome to Smack Dog Wrestling Reviews. We're two weeks away from WrestleMania. Let's see how Raw continues its momentum to the biggest show of the year. Here we go. So for weeks now, we have not seen Brock Lesnar in the ring. Last week, he finally turned up. And guess what? This week, he started off the show again where he and Paul Heyman are legitimately taking the piss out of Roman Reigns. That's right. Remember last week when Roman got the hell kicked out of him? Well, guess what? Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman did a masterclass of a hell of a promo. A.K.A. Paul Heyman did all the speaking. And Brock Lesnar did this. Which is always cool. Um, but yeah, it was legitimate saying, look, Roman's suspension's finally over. Blah de blah de blah. But he's not gonna be it. Remember when he said he'll be there even if he's not featured on the show? Well, guess what? Roman turned up. They had a bit of a fight. Roman was still injured. Brock Lesnar beat the crap out of him, used the steel stairs, which it goes to the ring, and beat the crap out of him some more. How was this for an opening segment? To be honest, guys, I thought it was a great opening segment. You get out Roman Reigns getting beaten up by Brock Lesnar, and you had Paul Heyman cutting probably one of the best Paul Heyman promos you could ask for. So, good start to the show. So we had Nia Jax taking on Mickey James, and I'm not gonna lie, guys, this was what I would class as the slow burn baby face. So what that means is we know that Nia Jax is possibly gonna be the one which turns because let's be honest, the bullying segment they're doing with a, you know, Alexa Bliss is working. The fans are getting a little bit more behind Nia Jax, and let's be honest, I would love to see Nia destroy Alexa Bliss to claim her for first Raw Women's title. And to be honest, the match itself was a bit messy. Let's, it's gonna happen. You can tell that uh, Nia's still a bit, you know, green sometimes. But for me, she has definitely the most improved women's wrestler in the company. So I'm looking forward to that match at WrestleMania. The match itself against Mickey James was nothing special. She kind of had a bit of a, you know, it's a momentum type of match. She beat Mickey James. Now she looks forward to destroying Alexa Bliss. What did we get this week? We got the 205 crew back on Raw. My God, I was surprised as well. And slightly disappointed. Don't get me wrong, it was a great match. But it's a tag team match where we've got the two number one contenders, Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali, taking on Drew Gulak and TJP. He, the two big heels on the 205 brand taking on the two biggest baby faces on the you know, 205 brand. It was a decent match. Only problem is, I was watching it and I went, oh, I wish this was on 205 because we would have had more time to enjoy the match. Obviously, being on Raw, they can only have five minutes because it's Raw and we have to watch Ronda Rousey's entrance into the WWE for the 6,282th time. But to watch a really good cruiserweight match, we have to watch 205. But the best bit about the whole match was that Maverick was on the... Uh, commentating team which is awesome because he's really good at talking and I actually enjoy listening to him so the match itself was good but quick and you had Maverick the GM of the 205 brand on the mic as well winner winner chicken dinner next up we had the Miss TV special where the Miz literally pretty much laid it out on the Miz Taraj saying they were idiots and the, it was quite good to be honest probably the best segment for me on the whole show let's be honest it's got the Miz in so it's gonna possibly be one of my favorite segments full stop but it was good to have Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel actually having a prominent role on this segment it looked like the Miz Taraj were gonna turn on the Miz after Seth Rollins and Finn Balor were you know, kind of teasing it, that kind of situation. But no, it was all a work. And the Mr. Raj attacked both Finn and Seth. Made it interesting. It looked like the Miz had it all planned. Seth and Finn fought back with the help of the rest of the Balor Club of Gallows and Anderson, which was good. And it laid on for a match later on on the show. And seeing the Miz scared and... You know, acting quite well. Yeah, and these promos were fantastic again. And seeing both Seth Rollins and Finn Balor holding the Intercontinental Championship belt 
kind of made everyone scream a little bit, including myself. So that is a good, uh, good segment. And again, Miss TV being the best segment on Raw right now. So we had Oscar taking on a jobber. She beat the jobber with a kick. That's it. Just that's it. Then we had Woken Matt Hardy declaring himself in the Andre the Giant match at WrestleMania. And to be honest, I'm kind of happy with this. I like that Matt Hardy is entering it. And to be honest, I secretly want him to win it. Just imagine if Matt Hardy won Andre the Giant Battle Royale. He would be rather interested. He could really build up his character some more and cement himself as being a legitimate threat for all the rest of the roster. It's not going to happen. It's going to possibly be a big guy that no one really cares about. Or Elias. But it'll be interesting to see. We got the segment which kind of surprised me and shocked me at the same time. I was not expecting it this week. We had Sasha Banks and Bailey confront each other and had a ball backstage. It was all because Bailey texted Sasha saying, look, I'm going to be in the Women's Battle Royale. And Sasha was like, is that it? And they started to have bickering. And Sasha actually attacked Bailey from behind. Both women started brawling against each other out in the back. And it had to take the whole, well, not the whole, but some of the referees to pull them apart. It was a really good segment. And you don't know, again, who's turning heel. Is it going to be Sasha or is it going to be Bailey? With Sasha attacking first, you kind of go, ooh, Sasha looks very, very heelish. But because of Bailey's attitude lately, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Bailey who turned heel. Again, this is well worked and I like that it's week by week that you see their friendship dissolving into this angry rivalry where both women want to beat the crap out of each other. Well done WWE, now let's see who's going to be the heel. That's what I want to see next. Next match of the night was Braun, Stra Braun Strowman sorry, taking on Sheamus. And if Sheamus would win, he would find out who Braun's secret tag team partner for WrestleMania would be. And it was, to be honest, a decent match. It was nothing special, but you saw that the bar could push Braun to his limits. And that was well worked. Braun sold really well, which you don't expect for Braun Strowman. And Shazaro and Sheamus, again, they're just showing how clever they are as a tag team. Very exciting. And I'm actually looking forward to this match at WrestleMania. It could go either two ways. That the bar win by cheating or Braun Strowman just absolutely destroys him no matter who his tag team partner is. I'm kind of hoping it's someone cool like Elias. No, not Elias. But someone interesting. We could see a call up from NXT or could we see a legend returning to help Braun take the tag team titles. I'm hoping for one of the two because it's kind of exciting not knowing who Braun's secret partner is going to be. But the match itself, again, well worked. Just shows how good Cesaro and Sheamus really are in the ring. And it just shows how far Braun Strowman has developed as a wrestler. So, no complaints. During the show, we saw Stephanie McMahon and her husband, big old Triple H, showing off a montage of their training with their private trainer. Whoopty bloody do. We already know that Stephanie McMahon and Triple H work out at at stupid o'clocks because we've seen the documentaries and we've seen them talk about it a hundred billion times in the past. It's nothing new. But they were pretty much stating that they are always prepared and they're ready to take on Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Later on in the night, we saw Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey talking in the ring saying they know that private trainers pampered life doesn't make you ready for gold medalists. It was a basic segment, it was very dull, and Ronda Rousey's mic skills need to improve a hell of a lot if you're going to push her to the moon after the WrestleMania, which we know they're going to. But it luckily was saved by Absolution. Thank you, Paige. Why? Because Paige probably cut one of the best promos I've seen in some time and actually did something I was not expecting. She made me interested in a future match we could possibly see, and that was when... Paige offered Ronda Rousey a spot on Absolution saying, look, you need friends if you're taking on Stephanie McMahon and Triple H and we can be your friends. Ronda said no. 
Paige didn't like the answer, and Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose tried to attack her. Obviously, Ronda Rousey beat the crap out of them. And yes, they're noobs, so it's fine. They can take the punishment and not lose any momentum because they haven't got any of that. Much. But WWE did something, I think they did by accident. They made the fans go, well, I want to see Paige versus Ronda Rousey at some point in a proper wrestling match. And to be honest, that was the bit I actually took out of that whole segment. Didn't care about the Stephanie McMahon and Triple H, but you know, do I care about the Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey friendship buddy partners? No, not really. But did I care about Ronda Rousey taking on Paige? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Then we had a tag team match, like I said earlier on, where we had the good brothers, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, taking on the Mr. Roger, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And I'm not going to complain. It was a fine match. There was nothing really special about it. But we got to see the good brothers fight. But the problem with it was there was no The crowd just was so worn out, it seemed, with so many segments. By the time this match started, it was kind of like this match should have been on earlier than later and that's how it felt it just felt like this was a match no one really wanted to see as much but it was good to see Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows get the win they need that momentum because let's be honest I hope they are going to turn full on face because I think they are faces now I'm not sure they haven't really talked about it but Let's hope something happens soon so they can hold the tag team titles again because they are one of the best tag teams in Raw. They just need some momentum. We had Elias have a match with Rhino for some strange reason. Of course, we had Elias do his concert thing, which is fine. I don't mind that. It just wasn't as good as certain Elias songs. It just felt less, you know, less funny. But this one was just, it was mediocre. But when it came to the Rhino match, I was surprised. Rhino came out with his classic Rhino entrance theme, which he usually comes out with his Slater's music. This time, nope, came out with his own, with his Slater following him. Uh, it was a quick match. Uh, cro crossroads, I'm on Crossroads, wherever it was. Drift away, that's it. Drift away, one, two, three, gets the win. Then Elias hit Heath Slater with the drift away as well, and there. It's just kind of like, are these two just the jobbers for the Raw division? Well, yeah, of course they are. But, end of the day, Elias gets a win. He is one of the favourites to become Braun Strowman's tag team partner. So, yeah, he gets some momentum. Then our main event for the night was John Cena taking on Kane in a non-DQ match. And how was it? It was a typical John Cena type of match. Uh, you had a lot of outside the ring bumps and scratch. But to be honest, the guardrail bit with Kane was actually quite interesting. When Kane flipped him into it and he put, oh, it looked the guardrail bent all the way back. I mean, obviously, Big John went for a table, which he does quite often when it's a non DQ match. And then when it looked like Kane was about to get the win, Big John, AA, came for a table. One, two, three. Big John wins. Of course, Big John wins. It's Big John. And then he obviously, throughout the match, he was mocking The Undertaker, doing his big mm thing and thing and all that lot. And that was fine, and I thought, ooh, could we, could we hear lightning, could we hear the ding? No, none of it. Even Big John referenced all that. And nothing. No answer from The Undertaker. We know it's probably, it's going to happen next week. He'll turn up or, you know, the bells will go. But it's just a shame. I was hoping it would be this week so we could have a really good build-up. The last week before WrestleMania, but no... They're, they're taking the time with this one, but I'm looking forward to see The Undertaker's return. There you go, guys. That was Raw for this week. What did I think? Well, it was a fine episode. It wasn't as good as other episodes since Royal Rumble. Raw has just absolutely been killing it. This episode was fine. It was just nothing as good as what we've been having recently. I'm just hoping they knock it out of the park when we get to the last week before WrestleMania. Because you know that's always one of the best Raw episodes. So I'm really excited. 
But what did you guys think of this week's Raw? Did you think it was any good? Do you think it was bad? Do you think John Cena needs to start using that a lot more in matches? I think he does. Leave it in the comments below, guys. And if you like our videos, please like and subscribe. You'll see some videos floating around just around here. Check them out. And if you want to follow me on the old Twitter, I'm at Boise88. And you can follow us at Smack Talk Wrestling as well on Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time on Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews.